Today we have a very special guest from PwC Germany who will share insights into the global hydrogen market trends and also talk about the future direction for Korea and its market players. Dirk Niemeyer, who is Clean Hydrogen Solutions Lead of Strategy in Germany, has extensive experience working on a number of hydrogen projects across the value chain, from procurement to sales of hydrogen around the world, particularly in Europe. Hello Dirk, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, could you please briefly introduce yourself and also share the examples of the project you have worked on? Thanks, Winnie. Happy to do. Um, as said, Dirk Niemeyer is my name. I am from the German company, especially from Strategy and the strategy consultancy of PwC, working in the Munich office. I'm leading the clean hydrogen and sustainable fuel activities for Strategy and, and together with my team, I'm supporting several clients in energy, industry, and mobility, in transformational strategies and business models, amongst others, ThyssenKrupp with the largest stand of clean hydrogen at the moment and also large energy utilities in setting up their hydrogen projects. After spending a week in Korea meeting with a number of Korean companies, um, could you please start by sharing your thoughts and impressions? Yeah, it was a very impressive week as you said and we met with companies from e.g. Uh, chemicals industry, steel industry and power industry. And all of these companies are particularly interested in uh, ramping up the green hydrogen, green ammonia market for Korea. On the other hand side, they also need to sustain value for their shareholders. And that led to uh, several discussions on how to ramp up the market, how to do this cost effectively, and really also how this could be financed in this situation in the market. Well, how do you think the perspective of Korean companies in the hydrogen market differs from the, the players in other markets, such as in Europe? The main difference comes from the different approaches of the countries and the regions towards hydrogen. In Europe, we are putting the industry as the first of taker group, starting with steel and then chemicals and petrochemicals. In Korea, it's more the power sector because you don't have that much possibility of, uh, to install renewable power generation. And these differences are, of course, reflected in the approaches of the companies towards the hydrogen ramp up. What is the current state, the current status of the international hydrogen market? Mm. And what are the recent key trends that Korean companies need to pay attention to? The current status is unfortunately still huge plans and little realization. In our recent study, Navigating the Hydrogen Ecosystem, we found out that there is a huge ambition in the market to build electrolyzer projects. The volume is 840 gigawatts, but it's still 2% of them who have an FID, final investment decision, or are in operations. And the reason for that is that there is a missing offtake that makes the projects bankable at the end, and that is in turn driven by the huge price gap. So what we need to ramp this up is initial funding and subsidies that we had also for the renewable power market. Looking ahead to the midterm, let's say from 2024 to 2030, what notable events, regulations, what trends do we expect to see from the hydrogen market? And how do you think this will impact the market and industry? Um, speaking for the EU, I would expect that we in the EU will miss several of our ambitious and maybe too ambitious targets for 2030. And that in turn will lead to probably a bit more pragmatism in the regulation, more funding in the market, and especially to probably higher CO2 prices, which in turn then the revenues could be used to finance the green transition. So the polluters pay for the transition and make it more affordable for everybody. Well, recently there have been some delays. Actually, many delays in large projects, mainly due to offtake issues. Mm -hmm. And how are the key players in Europe are addressing these challenges? There are not, not too many options to do that, really, because you can just, if, you, if there is no offtake, you can just postpone your projects, stretch them, scale them down. But the good thing is that just recently we saw some significant funding in the European market with the Innovation Fund. Mm -hmm. We saw some of the auctions by the Hydrogen Bank and by H2 Global, which gives some 
contract for difference funding into the market. We see some large offtake like for Thyssen Krupp and the steel makers. So what we see is some momentum in the market driven by funding, driven by regulations and also um, driven by the volunteer activities of individual companies. And my last question of the day, uh, how do you think Korean companies can capitalize on the global market changes and also the introduction of CHPS? I see two ways that they can do that. The first way is to learn from the European auctions and the effectiveness of that to really procure hydrogen and clean ammonia in a very cost-effective way and to deploy that into the Korean market. And the second thing is, I think, to participate in the market growth of the European market by supplying Europe with clean hydrogen or clean ammonia from own products, projects that they do, or also establish or use European subsidiaries of those companies in order to participate in auctions like the European Hydrogen Bank auction. Uh, Dirk, thank you for sharing your insights and experience today. Um, it's been a pleasure to talk with you. Um, we look forward to more collaborations with you and your team in the future with Korean clients. Thank you so much. Thanks, Winnie, for having me. It was a tremendous week with all the client meetings, exciting discussions, and I think there is a lot of opportunity for us to jointly develop the hydrogen market in Korea and probably also in Europe. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah.